Hi there. Over the course of this video series, we've built a nice little books API for our business. It's going to allow our suppliers and employees to manage books. However, if we make this API available on the internet, anyone can use it. We don't want that. So we need to add authentication. There are many different ways to handle authentication, but one of my favorites is to use a JSON web token or JWT. The idea here is to have an auth endpoint that the user calls with a username and password or client ID and client secret, and then they get back a JWT. They can, yet, they can then use that JWT for all subsequent API requests by including it in the authorization header. Let's have a look at how JSON web tokens are made up. On jwt.io, there's a debugger section and it shows an encoded JWT with its decoded parts. You can see the header shows the algorithm type and the type of token, which will always be JWT. Next, we have the payload. And here we can encode any piece of data that we want into the JSON web token. So this would just be a, a JSON object. Finally, we have the signature, and this is just to verify that the JWT hasn't been tampered with in between the person creating the JSON web token and us trying to decode it. The second point is very interesting. I'm just now going to change the data that we have here. The reason the reason this is interesting is because we can add something in here like user ID. And what this means is when a user calls our API, we can get the JSON web token, decode it, and find out which user they are. Um, and that can be used for um, authorizing which resources this user can access. So let's review the auth flow. I have a little diagram here, which should show us a user interaction between the client and the API. So the client will make an API call to our books API with some kind of credentials. Let's say a username and a password. The API will authenticate the user. We'll probably use a library for this, such as devise, and we will then create a JWT, which will include some data about the user, probably the user ID, and we'll return that JWT in the response. The client can then include the JWT in the authentication uh, header for all subsequent requests. With each request, we will get the uh, JWT, decode it, and uh, authenticate the user. Over the next few videos, we're going to build out this authentication flow into our application. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.